인기 그룹 여 가수에게 한 극성 팬이 살해하겠다는 협박 편지를 보냈습니다. 이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비이비
In addition, Yonhap News reported that prior to the incident, the members of Baby Vox were drenched in water by four out of five students after leaving a fan sign event. Their company felt the seriousness of the letter and reported the threats on September 10th to the police station. DR Music added, Recently, after rumors spread through PC communications that Kan Myon was dating Moon Hee Joon, she was threatened dozens of times. As tension rose in HOT's fandom, they began to point their finger at Kan Myon, accusing her of creating the dating rumor. They also accused her of sending the bloody letter to herself with the blood of her manager. Anti-fans logic was that the company was small and despite their seniority over other girl groups, they were falling behind. If Babyvox's name was attached to a big group like HOT, it would surely get the public to talk about them. Their nonsensical logic was laughable and there was no proof of it being true. At the same time, the daughter of the CEO was being bullied at school and rumors spread that the CEO's car was burned. To add to the seemingly never-ending list of horrors, when Babyvox would attend festival events at Myeon's high school, her juniors would shout and insult her. On September 15, the same police station who were investigating the murder threats received a report that another razor and threatening letter were mailed to the company. The police station collected the evidence and asked the Seoul Metropolitan Police and the National Institute of Scientific Investigation for a fingerprint ID. At this point, the company has had enough. They released a statement claiming Kan Myon and Moon Hee Joon never met each other. They would also establish emergency measures to protect her personal life, such as appointing two managers as bodyguards by her side. As the investigation continued, the threatening phone calls decreased, but there were still some anti-fans online who criticized the idol and made subtle threats. The numerous threats and police investigation piqued the interest of NBC News Desk and reported the story during the evening news. Finally, in July of 2000, investigators caught the perpetrator who sent the letters. As suspected, it was a female high school student who was a fan of HOT. It was reported that Babyvox did not press charges once they found out it was a minor, and so the case was closed. But by this time, the CEO was once again fed up and left a message on the company's website directed to HOT fans expressing his position. This time, HOT's company, SM Entertainment, dismissed the rumors as well. Almost two decades later, in a 2017 interview with radio star, Kan Myon spoke on the incident in more detail. There were some people who put in rusty knife blades in envelopes in a way that when you opened it, you would get hurt. They even sent me box out of these blades. I guess they wanted me to use it. We ended up using it in the office. And then, there was someone who wrote a letter in blood saying, let's go to hell together, I'll go with you so you won't be lonely. On October 9, 1999, Babyvox sang their single Killer on Inky Gaiom. As the group performed on stage, HOT fans put away their balloons and folded their arms, staying silent in protest. However, when HOT appeared, White Angels enthusiastically waved their balloons. In a 2019 Happy Together appearance, Shimon Jin revealed the reason behind her iconic death stare from her Killer promotions. She explained the group was interviewed prior to their first performance of Killer. The girls were asked about the death threats and anti-fan attacks which made the singers uncomfortable. When they got on stage, anti-fans held up their middle finger which fueled Shimon Jin's anger even more. That day, she let out her anger on stage through her intense stare and dance moves. After the performance, the CEO called Shimon Jin. She thought the CEO would be angry with her for her over the top actions, but in a surprising twist, the CEO loved it. Despite the unexpected turbulence from the hate campaign, Baby Vox persevered, but little did everyone know this was only the tip of the iceberg. Baby Vox's popularity soared after the success of their third album. This meant for their fourth album, they were in higher demand and expanding the reach outside of South Korea. On May 25, 2000, Baby Vox were scheduled to perform at Hyangyeon University for a music program. The youngest member, 15-year-old Yoon Eun Hye, better known as an actress these days, almost lost her vision due to a dangerously close encounter. The attacker was a female student who disguised herself as a staff member. In 2014, Kim Mi Zi, Shim Eun Jin, and Kan Myon appeared on Taxi where they explained the situation. The girls were waiting backstage to perform when someone walked beside them. They explained the student had pulled out a Pikachu doll as a decoy and something shot out. 
Yoon and Hae immediately collapsed to the ground and cried out of pain. The company canceled their performance and sent the young idol to the hospital. Details were later released that the anti then had filled a water gun with a mixture of soy sauce and vinegar with the intent to blind the person. Luckily, the anti fan was caught, but back at the hospital, the doctor informed Yoon and Hae that she suffered from a damaged cornea. This would take 4 to 5 days to fully recover. In the meantime, she would continue her activities as scheduled and wore an eye patch till her eye recovered. There was also one incident where anti fans allegedly mocked Yoon Hae outside of her van. The scary incident left her with trauma, and Yoon Hae was terrified to go out in public. There was one incident where anti fans allegedly mocked Yoon Hae outside of her van. She would cry and plead to stay in the group's van, opposing to perform. Their manager was forced to pull the young idol out so she could complete her schedules. Now it's important to note that not all these attacks and threats were done by HOT fans and we shouldn't villainize an entire fandom or fandoms for eternity. Majority are all adults now and have reflected on their actions and some have even apologized to the group years or decades later. Following their second single off their fourth album, Baby Vox were set to perform Betrayal on KBS Music Camp. As soon as the girls began to perform, the studio was filled with chants by anti-fans aggressively chanting, Turn it off! This particular protest was organized by Shinwa fans, whose group was also performing that day. But due to the fans' behavior, Shinwa was disciplined. The group had to temporarily stop music show appearances for the following week. Public appearances were undoubtedly a living hell. Everywhere Baby Vox went, anti fans followed closely behind. The girls were often physically attacked on their way to schedules. Razors, rocks, and raw eggs were an anti fans' preferred weapon of choice. Their fans, baby angels, would try to protect the girl group using their bodies as shields, but they would still get hurt. In the same Radio Star interview with Kan Myon, Shimon Jin added, They meant to hurt Myon, but Myon never got hurt. Instead, the members around her always did. The hate didn't stop at the group, but plagued the fandom as well. In 2017, a fan of Baby Vox during that era wrote a lengthy blog post about their experience. They described themselves as a passionate baby angel from their early days and attended various events held by the group. They detailed various attacks they witnessed and rumors that were spread. It was not only a terrifying time for Baby Vox, but for the fans as well. Baby angels tried their hardest to hang in and stay loyal to the group, but the continuous attacks made it difficult to stay a fan and became more dangerous. Huge combined group events like the Dream Concert became a war zone. Boy group stands usually dominated the second and third floor and decorated the arena with gigantic banners and posters. Baby Vox fandom often complained about rivaling fandoms throwing garbage at them during these events and pulling and sticking gum in their hair. Rumors were also spread that the fans' clothing were also getting ripped by razor blades. There are so many more stories of anti-fan behavior from this post, but there may be some exaggerations, so I'd take what OP says with a grain of salt. By 2001, HOT announced their disbandment, so threats naturally began to die down. On the other side, Baby Vox continued to get bigger as the years passed and focused on international promotions. By 2005, Baby Vox silently disbanded after Shimon Jin left the company. On top of other situations that I'll explain in my video of the history of Baby Vox, Shimon Jin was mentally exhausted by the slanderous comments made against her and having to live her life in fear. The best decision was for her to separate from the group. There was also talks about Baby Vox staying active after her departure with the new addition of foreign members, but the company's plan ultimately fell through. As K-pop continues to evolve, so does fan culture and the community. The fan wars of today look slightly different from the ones of the 90s and early 2000s. These days, keyboards and social media platforms are used by anti-fans to fight their battles. They can hide behind the screen with the help of fake profiles and anonymity to say whatever they want without having to face a person, and it's almost hard to ignore when it's just a click away. This has long been a social problem in South Korea, and unfortunately, we have lost precious gems because of this behavior. I think at the end of the day, what we can all take away from this story and one similar is to enjoy what you like and not give in to toxic behavior. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to keep your eye out for my History of Baby Vox video, but in the meantime, I have other videos discussing fan wars and a deep dive into one of Baby Vox's most infamous members. And with that being said, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay!